while I'm here. I, I was in such a hurry. Hi. Uh, so stream stream us interrupt us. I think is is what probably just happened. Let me check some microphones and make sure. I, yeah. So I am sharing my audio with Twitch and and Zoom right now. So um, hi. I'm I'm the I'm the uh, founder of the Lift and Shift Foundation, and um, I, I'm I'm here to to kind of host some some nerdy stuff tonight. Um, I'll. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute. I just want to take take the first minute to to say thanks to anybody who caught my shenanigans as we started. And uh, don't 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 be discouraged. Don't run away. Don't don't be scared off. But uh, I'm also a member of our design team, and this is this is uh, a stream for our design team, um, where we can um, share some of the projects, some of the things we're doing uh, behind the scenes, some of the things that people might not be able to get involved with because our 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 makerspace for our nonprofit is, is this virtual thing where um, uh, we, we can't be everywhere all at once. So I've, I've got some 3D printers here and, and we do some things uh, remotely from right here. But um, you, as a viewer, as a person who might be checking this out, can can snoop around some of the About Us things on Twitch. And when you, when you see um, ways to sign up and join in, uh, that that's there for you. That's... <laughs> That's your stuff. Uh, we 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 encourage you to join us, to to drop in the chat, to ask questions, to to do things, uh, because th that's this is an, an educational thing, and what we like to share, not just like the the science and the things that we're doing, but also um, why it works. Um, and and as as a, a background note, I, I am a member of our design team, even though I'm a founder, because I get. Um, a, a little bit of a break from from the the monotony of, of being a, a nonprofit founder, you know, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, a, a an executive director or CEO or um, uh, uh, pencil pusher, <laughs> uh, uh, the 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 herder of cats when it comes to uh, lawyers, accountants, and board members and things. Yeah, that's that's me. I, I kind of um, I I love participating in everything that the design team does and and to me this is the the time I get to to relax and to have a hobby and to you know be, be one of the gang where I, I can I can throw in ideas and uh, design things and say oh I, I I've done that before and I, I know how that works let's let's try this uh, I, I think it's tremendously important to have a hobby and those those hobbies provide a, a great way to um, I believe I'm gonna the way I'm gonna frame it today is um, hobbies give you a great way to to have fun and relax while allowing you to recharge from uh, you know um, everything life throws at you. So uh, I'm I'm here and this this is this is what I get out of it. Uh, I I have a feeling that there there's a handful of other people who feel the same way, and that that leads me to the end of my soapbox because I I am not just on. Twitch, I am also on Zoom, where we have a design team who has joined us, and we're not a partner on Twitch yet, so we can't just like share this stream with anybody and everybody. Uh, the way we get around that is we, we set up a Zoom for a design team, and it's actually in a, in a calendar, so our design team can join whenever they're, they're, they're free. Um, and I, I, I just kind of serve as the host. I make sure that the, that the stream happens, and uh, I think in the, uh, hopefully in the future, uh, as, as, as more and more people get involved, I, I can share some of this. And if, uh, I, I don't know how the, the whole partner thing works, but um, when we get there, we'll figure out how we can share this with, with even more hosts. And uh, I, until then, you, you're kind of stuck with my face for the first five minutes at least of, of every stream, it seems like. so. Uh, but, but rest assured, there is actually a design team here, and, and they, they are behind me. If I'm not answering chats in... Twitch, I'm answering chats or, or talking to our design team in the chat on Zoom. And uh, we, we encourage people to reach out to us and join us there. Um, on Saturdays, we, when we uh, battle our robots, that, that, that's where we share our files back and forth, our, our like code for our robots. So uh, it's, it's, it, it's an interesting thing to, to see behind the scenes. I, I, I'm, I'm very, very open to uh, inviting more more participants to join us and see how this works. And since since I'm 
educating people on how the how the stream works and everything else. I am. Ooh, that's that's a lot of notifications there. Hold on. Whoa, what is going on? My, I'm I'm not. I'm gonna pretend my inbox does not exist for at least an hour. But I'm I'm gonna use my phone to control this stream because you, you can see if you you're on Twitch, and and even on Zoom you, you see my desk. I've got this keyboard in the way. It's it's gonna drive me crazy. Um, I'm using Streamlabs on my desktop to to um, host Twitch and and Zoom and everything else. And I I really want to work on my desk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my phone on, and I'm gonna open the Streamlabs app that includes all the buttons and remote controls and stuff. So I can control the stream from the app. So I can do things like change to. Ooh, uh, I haven't tested the other view yet. Let's let's test this other view. to send us back, and here we are, back in this screen. So I, I can control the stream from this screen, which means I can ditch the keyboard and um, make some room on my desk, which is gonna be important. So I'm gonna set my phone here. I am going to move my keyboard aside. It's actually gonna go under the desk. I have a, a stool that I set up under the desk so that it, it, it's kind of like a, my, 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 my desk is bar height because I'm in the kitchen. Uh, and so I have a, a bar stool underneath and I, I occasionally pile stuff on top of that because it, it makes it easier to handle or easier to grab um, but yeah so let's see I'm gonna I'm gonna set this here we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute I will I will set that down there um, and I will oh, we will we will share some some Chrome screen some some browser windows and we're gonna we're gonna discuss a workshop we had just just on Monday as I'm printing all of these things here and uh, they're, they're meant to handle food so I'm, I made a sandwich where I'm, I'm gonna eat later <laughs> you're all anybody who anybody who catches this is along for the ride but his so here we go we, we had this workshop and I don't know if I can oh I did not set up my screen share but uh, it's, it's in another screen so I think I can do that rather quickly so let me click on some buttons here let, let me switch to this view and let me do this number here where I'm gonna I'm gonna take just a minute to open up my my browser yes there we go and let me turn on my browser window oh yeah there it is but it's but it's super tiny view so let's blow this up so we we made some some cookie cutter or some I'm, I keep calling them cookie cutters but you're gonna see in a minute that they, they kind of shape like big cookie cutters and we could probably use them as cookie cutters but we we, we designed some uh, sandwich cutters you know um, if you've ever had a lunchable I think uh, when my kids were little we used to make our own lunchables because lunchables were like eight dollars and we it's my, my first lesson in economics with my kids was uh, let's let's go buy a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter and we will make our own lunchables for about a uh, dollar um, but uh, in any case, we, we made these sandwich cutters. So so we and we didn't make them all, um, uh, you, you know, all at once. But what we did was we, we used the sandwich cutter as a project to teach I don't know almost 40, 40 veterans uh, how to use Tinkercad. So the so the screenshot here is actually Tinkercad, and the, those were the the three D models that we designed so that you could cut shapes out of your sandwiches and, or just cut the crust off. And um, I'm here tonight to share behind the scenes because we're actually printing them for all of these veterans and we're gonna mail them out thanks to Wounded Warrior Project supporting all of this stuff for us. Um, I, just, I just do the printing. Uh, Wounded Warrior Project is gonna do all of the logistics of, of getting things from point A to point B, which is, is just as big a struggle, um, trust me. But, but anyway, um, I, I wanted to, to, to share this and I wanted to give you know some updates and, and look at some of the things that, that go wrong on a 3d print and and how I how I edit them how I adjust them so we're gonna open up my my slicer tonight and I use uh, Ultimaker's Cura slicer um, because it's free and and it's it's um, something I started using so I feel comfortable with it um, but we're, we're gonna take a peek at that we're gonna look at some of the settings some of the things I did to fix problems that are going on uh, with my first prints. So 
Um, hmm, where am I going to start tonight? I think I'm going to start with, let's start with, let's start with the desktop. Let's start with the first print that it just, just went horribly wrong. So, um, let's. hop over into our, um, I'm going to hop over into, let's do, yeah, let's do this view. So this is, this is my slicer. So let's check out my slicer and I'm going to, I'm going to show you exactly what happened. Um, and, in, in like, like real time, uh, through, through the, the simulator and, and Cura. So let's, let's check this out. So the first thing I would do is drop in this part. Um, let me find it real quick. It's, it's, is this it? No, that's not it. We could use that one, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Here we go. That one right there. So that that is the print um, I was trying to print. So I'm going to set it up just like I did before. We're gonna make two of them. And I kinda of just set them down both like this, right next to each other. And we'll, we'll put this at zero. Just to make it look just like the other one did. So, um, let me turn off some settings right here. The, don't get distracted by this, this is just uh, uh, the the massive hundreds and hundreds of settings that you might see and I'm going to turn this off so that I can show you what happened with the first print. I'm going to turn off my, my adhesion settings so that you can see what happened with the first print. So this is a reenactment of, of the actual print. There were a hundred layers if you see right here. Uh, you can see me like going down and down and down up and down with these layers so if I zoom in here, you can see each layer on this print. And you can see the bo the very first layer is, is very, not a lot of material touching the print or touching this this uh, gra this grid, which is the, the, the glass plate on my printer. So if, if you, you're not familiar with a, printer, with a 3D printer, especially a, a fixed fixed deposit uh, what, 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 um, material, whatever it's called, um, FDM is the, the type of printer. I think it's called fixed deposition or fixed deposit. Something is what the uh, the acronym stands for. But here you can see this 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 print. There's not a lot of material stuck on the bottom, so it's it started sliding around. If you if you want to take a, a look back, if it's not too um,
adhesion on our on our print and it's 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 actually called adhesion if you see if you can read this right here we probably can't read it on on uh, on um, twitch too easy but you can you can set the uh, adhesion features to help it help your print stick to the to the uh, glass a little better so I picked this brim which prints a brim around the edge of the print and I'm going to show you what the brim looks like in real life and I'm going to show you what the brim looks like on the screen first so I printed this brim so now watch watch what happens here at the bottom so now there's this new color this new color of filament these lines here are blue and that prints a wider brim around the actual object so you can see uh, uh, there, there's more material touching the glass and I set the brim width to three millimeters so the space the space right here is three millimeters and that's like eight little lines of, of filament that, that oozed out and uh, so but the, the ultimate goal is to have that stick and to have that like, like attached to the the the, uh, the glass bed, so if we if we go to my Let's go back to this view here and let's ditch let's ditch oh no let yeah let, let's let's bring out chrome here we're gonna bring out chrome now and we're gonna we're gonna take a peek at, at uh, chrome yeah yeah let's do that okay we will we will work with um, uh, my browser so I can show share some pictures so check it out so this this is this is a, a close-up view of this print, and I'm, I'm probably going to stick with this for a little bit because th there's there's a lot to talk about here. The first thing that that um, I struggle with uh, is is you can see th this this print is not didn't stick to the bottom of uh, to to the glass bed even with that that brim on it. So there there were. There were there were the corners that peeled up like a potato chip, and that's that's called um, there's a name for that in 3D printing. It, it, there's like something they actually call it, but you can see that that is my actual print right here, and that that is that is the one on my desk right now that uh, didn't work out so well, and, and it curls up on the sides. And for my specific printer, this happens uh, frequently because of airflow around the printer. So let me let me turn this off now, and let's look back around at this printer. So if I zoom back out, this looks like a box. And if you look at this, you can see a box here. Um, but <clears throat> what happens is um, it's not really a box. It's just a, like an imaginary size of, the, of my printer. So um, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not real. Like I, I didn't grab any pictures of my printer, and, and I, I probably should have. But uh, I actually put up a barrier because my, my printer is is in a room right next to the air vent uh, so there's air moving around it and what happens with this print right here if we go back to Chrome uh, if we check this out again on, 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 a, on a stream and you, you take a peek at this that 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 like curling up like a potato chip isn't isn't um, 
isn't like like well potato chips curl up because they're in the oven but this this it gets heated up to like 240 ish degrees celsius and then it cools off and with the the air blowing on it as, as much as it was <clears throat> Uh, it was it was expanding and contracting just like ice if you when you when you put ice in a or when you put water in, in a, an ice cube tray uh, and you put it in the fridge and you you go back and check when it's ice it, it's it's more ice than, than there was water there and, and that's uh, expansion and contraction every every um, material every chemical does that and it's it's in some like rate uh, water, water is no sub- noticeable, and this this expanded and contracted, and when it contracted, it pulled off, it pulled up and away from the the bottom of the bed. So uh, for for the next couple prints, I turned the fan off on the printer, and and you can well uh, you can see the difference right here. So this other view right here. Um, so uh, expensive printers that I that I work with, like like uh, out in places that have lots of money, like hospitals and stuff. Um, the printers come with like doors and a box, and and you you can close them, and they're they're enclosed with air and things. And uh, uh, this printer is is not like that because it's 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 a you know like like. Um, I think I bought it for $250. It's a Creality Ender 3. Um, I, I love it to death. It's a great printer. Um, but it, it's it's one of those like entry-level printers. And uh, it's, it's meant for you know your home desktop, for, for people who want to get into 3D printing. Um, not really sure if, if, it, if it's good for them, how to, how to do it, uh, all of those things. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I will say, it, I mean, it's a great printer. It, it's been a workhorse for, for me for a long time. But these are the kind of things that you will have to troubleshoot when, when you have a 3D printer that doesn't cost, you know, like like as much as a car. <laughs> so uh, that that that's that's like a real problem. And I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a drink while we're while we're doing this. Just just some water and juice. But um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah yeah yeah. So so this this is another uh, like like challenge for for 3d printing is is that and this was probably like if we come back to the the rat's nest that i had I will come back to you know the the, the uh, composite view here with all with me and stuff, just so I could say that uh, 
this it it's when you um, when you set this this kind of stuff up when you set these kind of printers up be aware of you know where 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 they go in the house so if they if they they end up um you know on a desk next to an air vent for example they're, they're going to have air flowing on them you might you might need to box them in or create a you know put, put a box over them um, you might have to be aware of uh, of pets being around of um, you know um, I got I got my my one of my kids a 3D printer and they they have cats and that that was my biggest concern was, was like your, your cats are going to think this is a toy dude uh, put put this put this away from the cats I don't I don't I don't want your cats to catch fire or something uh, or start a fire because they 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 swat something uh, you know that, that is uh, 400 degrees uh, onto the carpet that kind of stuff it it it's happen it happens it's a it's it's a, a a consideration for anybody who's who's uh, into wants to get into 3d printing um, and that that's that's one of the things that I will always uh, share and and kind of like uh, advocate for is, is safety with devices um, that's where I got to put my like engineer and, and uh, non-commissioned officer hat on and, and say uh, that, that's that's your safety brief don't don't start fires uh, that's that's pretty much it uh, this stuff will it, it will burn you it will it will start fires uh, I was I was messing around with, with the nozzle earlier it, it, it uh, with my bare fingers and uh, I, I'm missing a little bit of a fingerprint right here uh, just just from touching the nozzle to, to grab some goo off of it um, the, noz the nozzle for this material is uh, two two hundred and sixty I want to say two hundred and sixty degrees Fahrenheit Celsius so it's like uh, it's like four hundred degrees Fahrenheit it, it, it's like like oven hot like, like it will burn stuff so um, that's that's my 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 conclusion for the safety brief how about that that's 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 what we're done with but there's there's some other things that, that don't really necessarily go into a safety brief for 3d printers um, one of the things is we 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 designed these to be um, sandwich cutters check it out that there's there's our view right there these are meant to cut sandwiches or cookies or things you will put in your mouth and eat and um, check this thing out right here. So you can see all these lines and grooves in it. Uh, it it's going to hold bacteria in these little little lines right here, and, and, and that 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 makes that makes three D prints not food safe just because you know you you design something and you say it, it's it's a cookie cutter or or a sandwich cutter doesn't make it food safe. And th there's a lot of information on the internet about this. Oh, I forgot! I forgot my cleaning tool. I will. I will grab it when I grab uh, my other tools and things. But um, but yeah. So check this out. There's there's going to be a lot of stuff inside that. Let me let me see what the other. Yeah, this is a better view right here. This is a view of the 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 uh, the. Uh, oh, we're not going to copy text from image. There's no text in. Oh, there there's letters. There's numbers. So you can see these lines right here in the middle of this. They're gonna they're gonna. Um, they're gonna have food particles stick in there, like like parts of like your 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 bread and or your 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 cookie dough or whatever whatever you're cutting with this. Um, so we we need to come up with a way to to deal with that. And um, something I mentioned in our in our workshop uh, earlier this week is the FD the FDA actually actually prefers if you were gonna sell something like this in, in a store. You would, you would want it to be FDA approved uh, or F FDA certified, you know, food safe, and that would mean like coating it, like putting a, a thin coating of uh, epoxy on it. There's food safe epoxy out there. You can do that, and you can catch these thing, th this type of product on somewhere like Etsy. I am I, I, like a massive fan. Like, like um, you, you, I, I, I started my own LLC. I, I, I print my own orthotics, uh, and, and you know. I do all this stuff with with three D printers as as a uh, a business, and a lot of other people do too. You you can find cookie cutters like and sandwich cutters and 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 all of these three D printed things, things that people make on on Etsy, uh, on eBay, on uh, I don't know uh, 
Pinterest, I think. Uh, I've, I've heard people on, on Pinterest. So that stuff is out there. And, and if somebody's interested in doing that, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I love it. I, I, I think this is, this is a fun, cool thing to do. But to make this food safe, you have to, to do something to this print after it comes off the, your 3D printer. And the FDA is going to say you want to um, coat this. The, like, like the, the, the proper way to do that will be to go find um, food safe epoxy. And you, 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 can, you can just Google food safe epoxy. It, it, it's, it's like widely widely uh, used is out there. There, there there are several brands I'm not even going to promote any because there, there, there are a lot but I might get some and try it out uh, I've, I've used other I use other epoxies and things I've just never tried this uh, food safe epoxy before um, but the, 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 the goal there is you need to coat this in something else we're not going to coat these in something else we're going to do we're going to leave that to to the recipients if they would like to make these a permanent thing these were meant to be uh, you know, like, like collectible items for for the, the the people who joined the workshop. This was a practical exercise in and how to how to use Tinkercad, how to make things with a three D printer, and a little bit about behind the scenes, like how, what is a three D printer, what does it do, how does it work. Uh, so I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do some processing to this this part, this this thing, this this sandwich cutter. Um, and, and the thing I'm going to do to it is, is called vapor smoothing. So I'm going to go I'm on, on, on Twitch here. I'm going to, I'm going to shift to the, the big, big view so you can see my desk because I've got all the material here to, do, to, to show an example of vapor smoothing.
that's that's the process and and hopefully the, the goal here is you can see that on on my my um uh, my browser my picture so that i can zoom in like really close on this that I, I use chrome so i can zoom in really close so i took these pictures just before we started that's that's like a really rough surface that's that's like um food is definitely gonna stick in there and down here it's a little harder to see because of the angle because of the glare of the light but it's just the same the same way you can see that that those those lines in it from the print and that's because we can zoom in here and we can watch this print happen so every layer let's let's go up to a, a actually oh let's let's watch this whole thing oh sorry i need to change views duh oh no my view changed oh um okay hold on oh no i just want to turn chrome off right yeah there we go okay cool uh my my view changed i was i was lost for a minute all right we are back we are we are checking this out we are we're gonna we're gonna see in this is an example of the actual print so you can see just just what happened so there's my my nozzle right here in the middle you can see it go if i pause this right here this is the nozzle from the printer and you can watch you can watch the little guy go as I press play, click play right here, you can see him print out all of the material in the little lines and a little oozing. So that's that's what's actually happening. And he's he's printing the outside right now first. And <clears throat> if we speed him up so that he goes around and everything, now he's printing the inside. And there's all these, I'm going to pause it right in there. Ooh, back up. So you can see uh, the red is the, is the outer wall. Um... And the green is the the like um, bottom and top skin of this this object. <clears throat> so he's just going around printing, printing, printing the, the inside and outside of these, just like that, and then filling in the, the the inside. And as he goes up, you can see layers get stacked, just like this little these little tubes. So that's. That's a lot of space for material to get stuck in there, as you can see. Uh, like, uh, I think this angle might give you the best view right there. Oh. Yeah, right there. So you can see these getting stacked up on top of each other, just like that. And and in between all of those little, those little lines is just places for your peanut butter to get stuck. And that's that's not cool because then it will turn into moldy peanut butter and and you will get sick from it so we are gonna we're gonna do the the vapor smoothing the other thing you can do the other thing that I do frequently is uh, sand parts sometimes post-processing means you you have to actually sand something or uh, like grind something off um, and oh I do have it I have it right here so big big view of me um, actually Come back to
this view right here. If, oh, if I ditch Chrome, yeah, like that. Yeah, there we go. So those 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 lines and streaks in there, I do not think those are those are a little too uh, squished together for a washcloth to actually clean those. So I, I my recommendation always is a brush, uh, and we will do this vapor smoothing, which which will eat away some of the, 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 the ridges that stick out and, and make this uh, slightly smoother. That is my goal, is to not wreck these, these parts without, you know, the, the, um, the whole um, um, smoothing of the, like, the, the, the vapor from the, the fingernail polish or the, the chemical that I'm going to use um, is, is going to, you know, eat away at some of the edge. And I, that, that should be my other uh, comment, I, I, something I forgot to mention earlier. This, this, dun, dun, dun.
I'm gonna come back to big big view of me. Check it out. I've got sandwiches. I've got little sandwiches and my the the crust is cut off. Fits right in here. I'm 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 very happy about that. I dig this. I, I'm I'm happy about this. So that's um uh, that's the basics behind what what just happened here.